We're exploring the Chinese capital of Beijing, starting right here at the Great Wall of China. Now, the Great Wall, the section of the Great Wall, is in the precincts of Beijing City. And our intrepid reporter, Amy Lyons, is on the spot. Yes, welcome back to Beijing and where I am right now probably needs no introduction. As you can see behind me here, I am at the Great Wall of China, a colossal man-made structure with over 2,300 years of history. A lot of people have this idea of the Great Wall as one long continuous structure. Actually, it's not. It's made up of lots of different segments built by different people at different times in history. But the one main function of the Great Wall in general is to protect China's northernmost boundary. Amy, it's not one continuous wall. So there are many sections of the Great Wall of China you can visit within Beijing, but we have come today to Mu Tianyu, which is one of the more popular sections of the Great Wall for tourism because it's only about an hour and a half drive away from Beijing. We are still within the Beijing city limits. And another reason why it's so popular with tourists is it's very beautifully restored. The views from this section of the Great Wall are incredible. Even behind me here, you can see we've got beautiful cherry blossoms and behind you can see the Great Wall on this mountain snaking up between the people peaks in the valleys, it's absolutely breathtaking. Amy, starting at the Great Wall, you're going to show us a lighter side, a fun side of Beijing. In today's episode, we're actually going to be looking at the more modern, quirky, fun side of this city because it definitely has one. Now, having said that, let's go toboggan ourselves off the Great Wall of China, down this mountain and start our fun day in Beijing. This is so fun! <laughs> Great Wall actually does have a toboggan that takes you from the top of the Great Wall down to the bottom of the mountain and it is so fun because you can appreciate the beautiful views while having the time of your life. I've done it before and I never get tired of it. It's such a fun way to come down the mountain and to experience the Great Wall in a, in a different kind of way. And it's very exhilarating because you can actually control the speed that you go. So you can go as fast or as slow as you want. I mean, what a way to see the Great Wall. <laughs> this is fantastic. So downhill fun off the Great Wall of China takes us to a big new attraction there in Beijing. It's the new Universal Studios. That's right, Greg. This is newly opened. This is the newest Universal Studios in the world, and it's the first Universal Studios in China. So it opened up in September of last year, in 2021. This is the biggest theme park in Beijing, and it is the hottest place to come. Everyone wants to come here, especially on weekends and holidays. But today, thankfully, we're here on a weekday, so the crowds are manageable. The wait times are OK. So I understand there are seven separate themed lands. Yes, that's right, Greg. There are seven themed lands here uh, with a total of 37 rides. So that's a lot of time you can spend here in Universal Studios. And lots of people choose to spend the entire day here from 10 a.m. in the morning all the way until nighttime. And there's also hotels you can stay at this Universal Studios campus. So if you do want to stay for multiple days, you can. <laughs> I'm a massive Harry Potter fan, so this is the section that's getting me most excited. We are here at Harry Potter World, complete with a full-sized Hogwarts castle. But I'm not the only one excited. You can see so many people here that have come specifically dressed up in their Harry Potter-themed clothing to feel like they are experiencing a day at Hogwarts today. And uh, yeah, walking around here, it feels like I have stepped into the Harry Potter movie itself. There are so many shops here that are very true to the books and the films, and I'm just keen to explore and get amongst it. Oh, actually, this candy shop is very famous in Harry Potter. Let's go and see what we can find. So we are here at Honey Dukes, which is the famous candy shop from Harry Potter, and you actually can buy the candies featured in the movies. Okay, let's try these every flavor beans and see if they actually are every flavor. Let's try one. Mm, let's go for blue. That one's good. A little bit like apple.
behind me here is Kung Fu Panda Land of Awesomeness. This is the only Universal Studios in the world with this section. And I think it's very appropriate since Kung Fu Panda, the movie is set in China and we are currently in China. So let's go inside and check it out. Universal Studios, there are lots of themed restaurants, but this one I think takes the cake. If you've ever seen Kung Fu Panda, you may know that his dad owns a noodle shop called Mr. Ping's Noodle House, and they've actually recreated the noodle house here down to the finest detail. It is so cool. Let's go get some noodles. I love this restaurant. It is so cute. I love all the interiors and how there's all this Kung Fu Panda memorabilia everywhere. It is so beautiful in here. So Kung Fu Panda Land of Awesomeness is all inside, which makes them able to make it look like it's nighttime. Nighttime on the set of Kung Fu Panda. Finally, there's the daily parade, Amy. I can see the theme of Kung Fu Panda is carried on here in a big way. Madagascar, well, that's the theme on this particular float. And good old Shrek, Shrek, larger than mine. It's all colour and action, and a great finale to the new Universal Studios of Beijing, ahead of our visit to the artiest of art districts. So 798 Art, a real trendy place with visitor numbers almost as high as those that go to the Great Wall and the Forbidden City. A lot of people love to come here because it's very unique. There's not really anywhere else like it here in Beijing. Huge spaces, lots of light. This was designed, was it not, by the Germans back in the 50s to make this a very impressive site for artists and their work. Yes, that's right, Greg. If you have an eye for architecture, you'll realise that a lot of the architecture here is reminiscent of the Bauhaus-inspired design, and that's because it was originally German experts that built this factory back in the 1950s, and they called for form before function, which means large workspaces with a lot of natural light coming in, and that's what initially attracted the artists that came to settle in this 798 art district. And over time, it's become this network of galleries, workshops, shops, cafes, boutiques, bars, restaurants. It's just a really cool place to hang out. So it speaks volumes, does it not, for the appreciation the people of Beijing have for art? That's right, Greg. I'd also say this really shows Beijing's growing appreciation for art because it was only around 2000, 2001 that artists started coming here and making this their workshops. And in the beginning, that's all it was, a workshop area space. But the 798 art space here has really gentrified in recent years. And it's a place that people like to come to shop at boutiques. And there's some really cool cafes here, very interesting spaces. So I think it really does show that appreciation for art is growing and will continue to do so here in Beijing. As you say, it started with workshops and there's still a lot of art workshops. Yes, that's right. There's still a lot of art workshops here today. Walking through this space, you can see the artworks being made. You can go in, interact with artists. And there's also a lot of gallery spaces as well. Some of them are free, some of them are not. There's a bit of everything here. But in general, I'd say there's more modern art that you can find here. One of the great experiences at 798 is watching artists at work. There are more than 1,000 artists who paint here at 798, creating an extraordinary body of work. One activity there at 798 is a craft craze known as tufting. What on earth is tufting? 
So tufting is the newest, coolest craft trend here in Beijing. Everyone wants to get their hands on it. Everyone wants to give it a go. And I'm actually here today to try it out for myself. The concept is you've got a blank canvas and then you draw your own design on it, whatever you want that to be, whether you want it to be uh, a frame for a mirror or a rug or some coasters for your kitchen table. You can pretty much make anything you actually use this instead of a paintbrush. This is what it looks like. It is a yarn gun. Basically, yarn is loaded up into this gun. It's very heavy and you use it to pump yarn into your canvas. And that is how you make your final design. My friends and I love going tufting. It's a great way to relax and concentrate on doing something creative. Yeah, everyone's doing it right now. You can't be a Beijinger without trying tufting. <laughs> So is this an evening pastime? Would you say to your friends, hey, let's go tufting? Yeah, for sure. It, you can do it any time of the day. It really depends on how much time you have because actually creating something even this big will take you about three hours. And something like what I've got to my left here would take you days. All right, a lot of time and certainly a lot of material. Is this a lot of expense? It is slightly expensive. If you want to make something about this size, it's going to cost you maybe around $50 to do. Uh, something bigger will cost you even more. But when it comes to the materials behind me here, you can see a wall of yarn, every color imaginable. The first thing you do when you come is make your design and choose your color palette. So it's, you're really part of the design process from the beginning to the end. So I've just finished. I am very excited to introduce my masterpiece. Ta-da! I love it. I think it is so cute. It's going to go so well with my home. Yeah, that's my touching experience. So Amy, it's just not 798 where you'll see art. There's art all over the place there in Beijing. Yes, here in Beijing, you don't have to go to galleries to appreciate art. This is a really good example of that. I'm here at Parkview Green Mall. It was built in 2012 and it combines art and a mall. So here there's actually 500 works of art, mostly sculptures, including the largest collection of Salvador Dali outside of Barcelona. So this is a really important place in the art community. And you actually don't have to pay an entrance fee. You can just come in, pretend to shop, I say pretend to shop because the shops here are very expensive. So I myself wouldn't come here for shopping. I would usually come here just to appreciate the pretty art. <laughs> People are very drawn to this space, whether you have money or you don't. If you've got money, you can really enjoy the dining atmosphere. You can enjoy the beautiful upper end scale stores. Uh, but if you're like myself and you're more on a budget, you can just come here and it's, all, it's like a free museum basically. And the artwork here is really unique and quirky. And the design of this building itself is very quirky. It's pyramid shaped, it's multi-leveled, and from any balcony you go to, you can get the most beautiful view over this mall and see at least seven or eight or nine sculptures within your immediate vision. So while we're inspecting buildings there in Beijing, let's check out some of the other ultra-modern architecture. A prominent visual area of Chinese culture, old and new, is its architecture. While China of old has a distinctive style that's taken shape over many centuries, its modern buildings are bold in design. Speaking volumes for an architectural and building fraternity that clearly wants to make a statement. Like Soho here. So it's definitely one of a kind. It is a lot of curving designs. It looks like something out of a, a futuristic movie. It's designed by Zaha Hadid, who has also designed quite a few buildings here in Beijing. She also designed the Daxing Airport, the new airport here in Beijing. A lot of very interesting, unique designs. But this one here I find particularly interesting because it's actually re a reinvention, a modernization of the traditional Beijing residential compound called a Soho Yu. And in those days, back in Beijing, about 500 years ago, the traditional Beijing compounds were called Suhe Yuan. They're made up of four buildings in a rectangular shape with a courtyard in the middle. And this actually follows a similar principle. It's four more cylindrical structures surrounding an inner courtyard. So 
It's even more interesting because this building is surrounded on all sides by Suhuya and these traditional be Beijing compounds. So we know Beijing is an historic city, but what we're seeing with this ultra-modern architecture is that it has a super modern face to it. That's right, Greg, and that's something I find interesting about Beijing because everyone knows it as a very historical city and the skyline is as dominated by sites like the Forbidden City and the Great Wall. But the skyline of Beijing is always modernizing, it's always changing, and I think there's still a lot that is is going to change into the future. And I think 10 years from now, we'll see a completely different skyline here in Beijing. More buildings popping up every year. On such a fun packed day, let's wind down just a little. We're off to a brand new day spa. It's been a long day here in Beijing. We've done so many things and we need a way to unwind. We need to relax a little bit. And the best way to do that is by coming to one of the many day spas in Beijing. The best way I can describe it is like a theme park of relaxation. I've got to show you. Let's go. So first step in this process is to enter the bathing and shower areas. Cameras aren't allowed in this specific area for obvious reasons because it is public bathing, but we'll regroup on the other side and that's where the relaxation really starts. But first, time to get clean. <laughs> So we've showered, we've got our comfy clothing on, we've now entered the leisure area, which is basically a three-leveled relaxation paradise. Anything you need to relax, you can find here. There are places for massages, places to eat. There are facials, manicures. You've got libraries, lots of books here to read. You've got lots of comfy chairs and bean bags. You've got steam rooms of all varieties. You've got karaoke booths. You can sleep here. There are sleeping pods. You can actually even stay here overnight. It's open 24 hours and many people just choose to spend all day here and relax and after spending a few hours here you'll understand why. This here is the heat room section and you can find heat rooms of all different sizes and varieties. You've got a volcanic room which is made of volcanic rock. You've got a Chinese herb bath here that's filled with all different Chinese herbs so when you enter the heat room it just washes over you and this one here we actually have a rock salt bath. So let's go check that out. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's all pink and salty. <laughs> So basically the concept behind these day spas are just come and relax, lower your blood pressure, do whatever it is you need to do to feel better. I think this here has got to be my favourite room of them all. This is called the Vent Chamber and they supply boxing bags, boxing gloves. It's also completely soundproof in here so you can just, you know, get out your frustrations. <laughs> oh, I feel better now. From the peace and serenity of the day spa, let's prepare to wind it up again with a musical finale. Our time in Fun Beijing is coming to a close. Now let's look at private karaoke bars. They're booming there in Beijing, as Amy is about to experience. Yes, that's right. KTV, as the locals call it, is so, so popular here in China amongst people of all ages, from young to old. It's so popular to come here at night and just sing and have fun with your friends. So the big difference in the way karaoke is performed there is that people go into their own private room, they can really show off. They don't have to worry about offending or being humiliated in front of wider crowds. That's right. Before I came to China, I thought that karaoke was one person on stage in front of a massive crowd. Here it's a lot less intimidating. You're just here with your good friends like I am today, my three besties. And uh, yeah, we're just having fun. We're playing some games. We're having a few drinks. We're eating some snacks. And it's a very low pressure environment. Just have fun and do what you want. And for those of you out there like me that need a bit more drama when performing, no to this microphone, come with me. We're coming to the main stage and we're bringing it. 
Hit it. My girl, my girl, talking about my girl, my girl. Ooh. And that is our take on Fun Beijing. Thanks so much, Amy, for sharing this all with us. And thanks for coming along on this zany day in Beijing. It's been a wild ride. 谢谢你们看这个视频 And、uh, yeah, 下次见 Bye bye from Beijing. Bye bye.